Ready? Mm -hmm. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> and hello to you at home watching. We are back with another episode and we are in full costume. Um, we are dressed as Barbie and Ken in the Barbie movie in their cowboy and cowgirl outfits. Such a sleigh. So iconic. Spirit Halloween really came through. <laughs> <laughs> um, you dyed your hair. I, I helped you hair. bleach it. Um, love the commitment. If there's one thing about this man is he is committed to a bit. He will do anything to make it work. And this just is proof of that. A couple days ago, it was very bright yellow. It was pretty ugly. A little bit. A little bit. But it... it, <laughs> it uh... But I got some toner for it. I had a very nice lady at um, Sally's Beauty help me told her the predicament i was like listen girl help a girl out because i bleached my husband's hair with box dye and i was like before you say anything i know i know <laughs> bad call but it worked it did lighten his hair it's just now it's a little brassy you know and that happens and she was like that does happen and i was like how do we where do we go from here i've pu fully put my trust in your hands right here and she's like, you know what? I got you. And she led me down the toner aisle. I showed her a picture of your hair in its current state. And she's like, this is what you need. And with a dollar and a dream, I came home and I mixed that bad boy up. And I put it in your hair. And I thought I turned it brown. But it turns out I didn't. <laughs> and yeah, it's like dirty blonde now yeah it's it the color was natural blonde i mean i would say it mm, it's a, mm. i thought it was gonna come out <laughs> a little more blonde yeah well but i mean i'll take this over yellow any day i think it's a big step up from what it was mm -hmm. um i even got a compliment on it you did I think so. it looks good. I think, and we were talking about it. I think it suits you. It looks nice. The, it's a new era for you. How do you feel about this? <laughs> yeah, I don't what, know. what, what era is this? What do you call this? I don't, I don't know. What? My dirty. No. <laughs> your, di your dirty era. I'm dirty. <laughs> My dirty era. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> My cochino. Era. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You kind of look like the Tapatio man. Oh, I thought you were going to say you kind of look dirty. No, 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 no. You look like a nice young man. Oh, I do kind of look like the Tapatio. He, when, when, when we were taking the photos and doing the TikToks for, for this, um, it, it's something about when you, when you look up, like... I don't know, like when the camera's angled and you can like see above it. I gotta see that guy's... I don't know. There's something about it. The, Maybe it's just who you too, are. Huh? I don't know. It's giving like mariachi. Like it's... <laughs> yeah, know. this is basically what this looks like. Yeah. But it's cute. It's slay. And I love that for you. I am taking over your tiny mic. And you are using a... I'd say average size. I mean, right, folks? Okay. And um, you're taking over my earphone microphone. Look, we're working with what we have today. My computer also decided that its battery has run its course and I need to get a new one. So I went to the Apple store and replaced it. It's in the shop right now and I don't know when I'll get it back. So that's why this episode is airing a couple days late so by the way happy friday happy friday gorgeous day um it's going well for you guys i do i do and for too us, for us, and yeah. for us better days ahead i hope um but yeah so excuse the um tardiness the, the tardiness the lack of mic the we're just it's 
it's just one of those days, you know. But the show must go on, and so, and it will. And, it will. and so, um, just wanted to briefly mention that because it just looks so unprofessional with the with, <laughs> with this the tiny little mic. Yeah, I um, mean, it gets the job done. Yeah, I mean, it's, but I get it. it's yeah. not the worst thing in the world, but I apologize for that. But um, we do have a, but we do have a very loaded doc today. Lots of interesting stories have come out um, that we can talk about. Can't wait to hear them for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> So, obviously, at the time of filming this, you know, there's a lot going on with Israel and Palestine. And I am going to be completely honest. Like, I don't know a lot. I feel like the media doesn't really cover in depth, like, a lot of the things that are going on over there. And so a lot of people are unaware. And I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't want to act like I know more than I do. Um, But obviously, we know that a lot of tragic things are happening to everyone over there. And so um, I didn't want to just like not say anything because that's like really privileged and I don't know. But I didn't want to make a statement of my own because once again, I I don't want to say the wrong thing and I don't know enough about it to say something and speak out of turn. But I did see... Um, you know, people talking online, and I did see a statement from Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter. She released a tweet, and I thought it was really nice. You know, Martin Luther King Jr. is a man of, like, peace, peaceful protesting, and so it, it makes sense that his daughter, you know, ha- believes in the same things. And so I just wanted to read that just to acknowledge it and not to, like, brush it under the rug. Um, so, yeah. She put, I mourn the tragic, brutal deaths of the people in Israel at the hands of Hamas and the tragic, brutal Palestinian deaths from bombings by Israeli military forces. I will not join in rhetoric that diminishes Palestinian or Israeli deaths as consequences of injustice or as casualties that must happen in response to terrorism. Children are being annihilated and families wiped out in the midst of our debates and denouncements. Hate begets hate. Violence begets violence. Toughness begets a greater toughness. We must meet the forces of hate with the power of love. Our discourse sinks lower and lower into dangerous speech and provocation of more violence. The ultimate weakness is that it is a descending spiral begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. Instead of diminishing evil, it multiplies it. These words from my father remind us that violence is a descending spiral. Wait, what? Oh, wait, that violence is a descending spiral and a destructive force that leaves behind a trail of suffering, hate, and desolation affecting generations to come. As you read them, please consider how we can each be a purveyor of true peace. Through violence, you may murder the hater, but you do not murder hate. In fact, violence merely increases hate. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. I call on political, civic, and faith leaders in the U.S. and in other nations to work for true peace in Israel and Gaza. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. True peace includes truth. Understanding our interconnectedness, exploring humane pathways forward, and justice which my father defined as love correcting everything that stands against love. Oh. Hands are Powerful. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Just uh, wanted to put that out there. Um, It's a powerful statement and... I think it speaks for itself. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, Acknowledge what's going on and not get too deep into it, obviously. But yeah. So something new is happening in the world of Meta. This is a new development that I've seen being talked about over the past couple days. I don't know if you've heard about this because 
let me just dive into it. But Meta is introducing... Let me just read the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Meta is paling... Paling... Meta is paying millions of dollars to celebrities to be the faces of its fictional AI chatbots that you can chat with on Instagram. The aim of the chatbots is to enhance the user experience on Meta-owned apps. This includes having one-on-one conversations, answering questions, diving deeper into your interests, and even offering travel recommendations. Initial thoughts. So like a Siri with like a custom voice of like... Your favorite celebrities? Kind of, but it goes deeper than that. So they created, there's like 28 or 32 chatbots in total. And they created profile accounts for each of those people. And they're all celebrities. So they used celebrities likeness to be these the faces of these chat AI bots. So like, for example, Kendall Jenner is one of them. And they made her an Instagram called, it's like at yours is Billy or something. And her name is Billy. Like we're supposed to, her name is Billy, but it's literally a picture of Kendall Jenner. What? Yeah. So like they did this with why Snoop, they just Paris use, Hilton. Like, Kendall AI? I know. Like, right. But use... it's weird. That's weird. But um, they did this with Snoop Dogg, Paris Hilton, Tom Brady, Charlie D'Amelio, Mr. Beast. What? Mr. B. Well, I guess he's big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they I think they put him into for the younger for the kids, crowd. Yeah. yeah. But um it's for the kids. That's crazy. You can follow them on Instagram and Facebook and you can chat with them. And so these celebrities are getting a pretty penny from all of this. Well, and actually, anyone I Anyone you're interested in chatting with? Mm, no no <laughs> <laughs> no not really um i actually got approved f- for the early like um trial of it i oh, guess really? yeah because it's not open to everyone and i don't know why no i got accepted that. but um it just let me know today that i can do it and so i haven't tried this out but it looks like this. Okay. And and you can talk about anything with this? Well, or? each profile has, like, the personality has a specific thing that they are interested in. So, like, Kendall Jenner is your ride-or-die older sister who is there to give you advice or talk about whatever you need. Um, Paris Hilton is Amber, a forensic specialist who solves crimes. I don't know what that's about. I think you'd like to talk about, like, your true crime lover, like, people who love true crime, to talk about that. I don't know. Um, Tom Brady is Brew, a confident sports debater. Brew. Brew. <laughs> What's up, Brew? <laughs> Snoop Dogg is Dungeon Master, an adventurous storyteller. Freaking Snoop out here with all these side quests. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie D'Amelio is Coco, a dance enthusiast, with which makes sense because she's a she was a dancer. Yeah, it would make sense for each of them to have their... I know, yeah. Like what their background is. Yeah. Um, and then Mr. Beast is Zach, brotherly jokester. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The the Snoop Dogg one I was just looking at is Dungeon Master. So like that's like the Dungeons and Dragon, like yeah, the host. Yeah. I wonder if you can play with him or something. I've never played it, but... Well, but. let's see then. Hey, is that... Um, Naomi, I am the dungeon master. Ready for an adventure? Be warned. Your cho- choice is your fate. I want to yeah, go on I'm a gu- quest. Yeah, Let's I'm go guessing find some dragons. You're basically playing Dungeons and Dragons with him. Welcome, brave adventurer. Your quest begins in the village of Green Haven. Rumors. Wait, what? but did you? So there, it's not their voice. No, they don't no. speak to you. Oh, they don't speak to you. It's just chatting. It somehow, like they were gonna use their their voice and stuff. No, but just his face. But going. it's crazy. Like they really, each of them have their own profile. Like, wow. What the hell? Oh. Which one's this one? This girl is like she helps you travel, plan your next adventure. Should we? I mean, that's kind of cool, but. 
but like each of these people have like their own social media accounts with their own AI generated images. What the heck? And it's like, what? Like she's just a straight up an account. Like it looks crazy. That's. I don't know what to think of this. I don't know what to think of it either. I think it's weird. I think I can't really see. I mean, I guess there there can the, be yeah, some good of be, it. Yeah. Like with the, the travel assistant's pretty cool. Like help me, you know that's pretty cool. And if you're alone, you want to play Dungeons and Dragons, you can play with Snoop Dogg. I guess, yeah, I guess. I just think the opposite side is what's the opposite side? I don't know. People maybe like. Making fake getting crazy people, maybe like people like are gonna actually think that they're talking to these celebrities and then think that uh, you know what I mean like, like they're forming are... an attachment to them and then they go like stalk them and try to kill them and you know I feel like those type of people are already thinking that way like that they're that they no know one's the probably person. safe yeah I don't know it's weird yeah I, I don't think I I don't think I would ever use it. I think the only thing I would ever use is like the the travel one because that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, it just seems a little strange. I don't know. Just and I'm sure I'm sure they're gonna add more too. Like oh yeah yeah they're just you know testing the waters right now. I think they spent like five million or something paying all of these people. Dang. Or eat to each of them. I don't really remember. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say five million. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It seems like a Black Mirror episode of some sort. Yeah, Meta's on some other level. You know what? They ha- Meta's the one that has those like the VR things. No, like I don't don't so. they have like a, a Meta like life or something? Maybe they'll like, maybe they'll like let you them. see them in person. <sighs> That's so creepy. That's weird, and you're gonna have a conversation with. Whoever, like their little fake personality. That's and they weird. Just have Snoop Dogg just, <laughs> just start smoking with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, this fucking wig is killing me, bro. I mean, do you have to wear it the whole episode? Kind of. Okay. But it's actually it's not the wig, it's the hair net. It, the hair net. The hair thing. Oh, it fucking hurts so bad. The one that goes over your hair? Like yeah. Okay, so there was this really interesting story that came out a little while like a week ago of this nine year old girl her, her name was Charlotte um Senna or Sina. S E N A. Um, and she went missing while she was at a camping trip with her friends and family. Um, she went on a bike ride with her close friends around dinner time and after biking a couple loops together she decided that she wanted to go one time around by herself mm. I don't know why never a good idea yeah. never a good idea but um, she did so when she didn't return about 15 minutes later her parents knew that, that immediately something was wrong they went to go search for her they were calling out her name and then they found her bike left mm. abandoned so obviously telltale sign um, that she was missing and so they ended up calling the police they reported her missing wow. and so after she was abducted this is crazy <laughs> this is crazy after she was abducted her kidnapper left a ransom note in her family's mailbox Wow! but here's the kicker the fool's a dumbass no. and he left his fingerprints on the paper oh my God. and probably on the mailbox oh, good. no he good did. no good 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 very good this wow. was like fucking like Marv and Harry from oh fucking God. Home Alone Those, uh, what's it called the bandit <laughs> the sticky bandits the, sticky the bandit. wet bandits yeah this is that guy for sure um, but his fingerprints were previously in the da- the police database from 1991 from a DUI and so it said that this was what he did. He drove up to the family's mailbox, assumed that they weren't home at 4.20 in the morning, 
opened the mailbox and inserted the ransom note, leaving a critical piece of evidence behind, his own fingerprint. He left it on the mailbox or on the... In the mailbox. In the mailbox? Yeah. Um, the suspect was identified as Craig Nelson Ross Jr., and SWAT teams were sent to his mother's property where they found Charlotte inside a cabinet in a camper parked out in the backyard. Thankfully, she was in good health. And Ross Jr. has been charged with first-degree kidnapping, and state police say that more charges are likely. Wow. Also, like, she was found in his mom's, like, backyard. Mom I don't know if she... Know? Well, in a camper in the backyard, oh. so I don't think she knew, yeah. but... But does that mean that he lives with his mom still? Like, this man's, like, 50 years old. Possibly. Like, that's another sign. Like, red flag. Dang. <laughs> um, but apparently... So how shortly was it from the abduction to when they caught him? She was missing for 36 hours. Oof. That's quite still, a... It's, it's quite a bit of time, a, yeah. yeah. She must have obviously been super fucking scared. Yeah. But... Um, like her family said, they said um, in a statement, we understand that the outcome is not what every family gets. And they also thanked the hundreds of people searching and rescue, the hundreds of search and rescue personnel and federal, state, and local agencies that work to find her. She was held captive for 36 hours, and Ross Jr. has a criminal history of SA and possibly a registered SO. thought so yeah so the details of th of what happened during that time haven't been released yet because they said that the police wanted to give her some space the little girl some space so i don't know if that will be released since she is a minor but yeah mm. but i mean at the end of the day it's a happy story because she was found yeah that's it's good yeah <laughs> yeah Sorry, that's, uh, that's crazy. <clears throat> I know. When was this? This was like last Saturday, last weekend. Damn. Yeah. Someone that I never thought we'd be talking about on this podcast is Jason Derulo. <laughs> <laughs> do you what know? Are you, what are you doing now? Do you know what this man is in the media for right now? Mm -mm. I haven't. I mean, I have no clue. I don't know. I don't know what he's up to. Is something cringy? I mean, yes, but that's not the right word. Hmm. Okay, that's here. It's a, it's a scandal. It's a scandal. Oh. It's a controversy. Oh. So, I guess... Well, he's obviously a singer. He's a musical artist. But I didn't know that he can, like, sign people. So, like, he... Oh, okay. He signed a girl named Amaza Gibson. And she's filing a lawsuit against him alleging that when he signed her on for a record deal back in 2001, the only way that he would advance her career is if she slept with him. She alleges come that... Huh? I was like, come on. <laughs> she alleges that he demonstrated aggressive behavior and she was coerced into having sex with Derulo and subsequently terminated when she refused to comply with his advances. So, yeah, like wrongful termination, sexual harassment. Wow. What did he, did he respond to He that? responded with a video response. Uh-oh. And it's kind of funny. Um, here it is. It's These claims are completely false and hurtful. I stand against all forms of harassment. <laughs> and I remain supportive of I'm sorry. The the long ass pause, the dramatic pause. I thought he was gonna end it right there. No. <laughs> like, like, yeah. You hurt my it's feelings. It's very dramatic. Very dramatic. Supportive of anybody following their dreams. I've always tried to live a long. life it's in too a long. impactful Cut way. It at least. And that's why I sit here before you deeply offended by these defamatory claims. God bless. <laughs> God bless. <laughs> God did. <dear. laughs> it's very like. Maybe he was trying to be sincere by like leaving those pauses in. But, but I just feel like it wasn't natural. It, yeah. I 
that's what makes it seem disingenuous. It seems fake because it's just too long of a pause. It's like he's feeling like too much. I don't know. Kind of cringy. Yeah, pretty cringy. <laughs> pretty cringy. Let's see the, the beginning again. Okay. I wouldn't normally comment, but these claims are completely false and hurtful. After every word, after every like sentence, like mm. really? His lawyer wrote this. He is a bad womanizer and should get what's coming to him. He is a womanizer. He is. Doesn't he have um, a kid? A kid with. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They're not together oh, anymore. Not together. Okay. No, they, they split after four months after the baby was born. And they made it seem like it was like amicable and amicable split. Mm -hmm. But um, the girl, I think her name is Jenna Frooms. She's like an influencer or whatever. And she like posted. Um, I only know this because I was doing my research mm -hmm. after this. I hadn't heard about this, but I was curious because I did see someone say like, "Oh, I believe that he did it because of of the way things ended with him and Jenna Frooms or whatever." Mm -hmm. And so I guess she posted like a selfie on her Instagram, and she was like, "Oh, like saying like you're worth it, you're beautiful, whatever, something like that." And then some stupid person called her out and was like, basically just saying like, like she's a slut like slut shaming her and right. and that her son is a bastard because they're not married i'm like bro like who the yeah. fuck are you dude and then so she was like i like i feel like i need to like speak up for myself and so she was like um like i really wanted it to work we had plans like we planned out this baby we had plans to get married but he couldn't stay faithful to me and blah blah, blah. like i can't help if he's for the streets and so i was like damn, damn. she was dragging him so Obviously, that adds fuel to the right. fire that he is a womanizer, and so it's a little more believable, you know? It's a shame that men do that. It's a damn shame. Mm hmm He always gave me the ick, too, so I kind of, I mean, I have he no was, evidence. He was pretty cringy. That's why He's I thought... He's very cringy. It was just, like, another cringe thing. No. I wish... Though it's funny, it's fun to to laugh at the things he does because he's cringy. <laughs> like who? I'm just trying to think. Like, is there another artist that like sings their name every single time? I I was literally thinking about that, and yeah. Yeah, there Tra are Trey songs. Trey songs. He, I think he's done it a couple times in his songs where he says Trey. Okay, like, but like at least one, like I feel bit. like like yeah, but a like, lot of artists like car, you know, like they do yeah. that. But like he's like Jason Derulo, like every single time. <laughs> like, do you really need to do that <laughs> every single time? Yeah, like or maybe just like a Jason or like you know like Cardi, like yeah. something. I don't know. Like it's just it's just he's his own cheerleader. Yeah, I don't know. There's something about it that. I don't like. Yeah. I don't like it. Mm-mm. 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 L. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Loser. So the breaking story of the hour that we're actually <laughs> of very... This hour? <laughs> of this hour that we're actually very fortunate to have caught because sometimes, you know, we film once a week and so sometimes we'll miss the breaking stories when they break. Um, but this is going to be new and fresh still by the time we upload this. So I'm happy about that. We finally got a lead on a scoop. <laughs> but um, Jada Pinkett Smith has a memoir that she's releasing in the next month or so. So she's doing like the whole press tour. She's talking, doing interviews. And so she was interviewed by, I didn't write down the name, but she did an interview. <clears throat> And um, she revealed that her and Will Smith have lived completely separate lives since 2016. So for seven years, they've been separated. And that that's weird to me because I feel like Will Smith is like always posting her and like mm. putting like heartfelt messages about her on his <laughs> Instagram. Like, yeah, Mother's Day on her birthday. I mean, I think they just probably have a lot of respect for each other, I think is maybe what it is. Like, 
Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like she, I don't know, like she's bullying him all the time. <laughs> and like he's just got nothing for love <laughs> but love for her. And she just drags his name through the dirt all the time. Why do you say that? Well, the whole Tupac thing, there's like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. things about Tupac going on. I think recently too, like, I think on his birthday or something, she posted a video of her dancing with Tupac. Did she? Something like that. I might be wrong, but um, I think it was Will Smith's birthday recently or something like that. And she just posted like a video of her dancing with Tupac in one of his videos or something. On his birthday. On his birthday or so- something like that. I don't really remember. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to have to pull it up and look at it. Well, if it was on his birthday, it's kind of messed up. Yeah. But <laughs> well, it's like it's things like that. that it's subtle things. Subtle yeah. things like that. The whole red table talk about the entanglement thing was pretty crazy, too. That's crazy, too. But apparently during that time, they were separated. During the whole entanglement thing, yeah, but it's, it's just a whole of, weird. Yeah. It's just a whole weird thing, cause, um, she. Let's see. So, they were married in 1997, and they addressed separation and marital troubles, but never this specifically. Though it's not a legal divorce, Jada said it is essentially a divorce without papers. Which, yeah. So she said so by then- the by the time. We got to 2016. We were just exhausted from trying. I think we were both kind of just stuck in our own fantasy of what we thought the other person should be. She added that she did consider divorce, but she hasn't been able to go through with it. I made a promise that there will never be a reason for us to get a divorce. We'll work through it, whatever she said. What? I don't know. What I don't does know. that even mean? Like, we stopped trying... But I can't go through with the divorce, but we're not together. I know. Like, no. It, yeah. It's I really just go stupid. through with it. I, yeah. I don't know. And then, and then, like, how he defended her at the Oscars. Well. My wife. Like, technically, yeah, that's his wife, but they're not together. But at the time, they were still keeping up appearances that they were together. They were still posing oh, on red carpets okay, and everything. Okay. They never. See, that's what was weird to me that. No, they were They're... still making this a facade, like, we're still together. Oh, okay. That's what it made it okay, seem Okay, then that public. makes sense. Because I, I thought they were just like, well, we've been separated for seven no, years No, no, no. Nobody knew about this. This is breaking news. There was <laughs> he, rumors. Even he, he didn't know until today. <laughs> <laughs> That's he, the running just, joke. Yeah, <laughs> he's just scrolling on <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> yeah, so, so the tea with that, with the Oscars, is that she... Apparently, you know, they that means that they were separated during that time and she thought genuinely thought that this the slap, Chris Rock slap was a skit and she didn't realize well so she said um she didn't realize until Will started to walk back to her his chair that it wasn't a skit. And then there's also tea with that because it kind of makes sense there's a little bit of backstory to why that could have possibly had happened because cuz like Chris Rock just- said it's a G.I. Jane joke, you know, mm-hmm. like it's not that serious. Um, but apparently Jada said that every summer reports would come out that her and Will were getting a divorce. And this particular summer, Chris thought that they were getting a divorce. So he called her and basically said, I'd love to take you out. She said, what do you mean? He was like, well, aren't you and Will getting a divorce? And then she was like, no, those are just rumors. And then he was appalled and he profusely apologized. But maybe, you know, Will, obviously, I'm sure she told Will about that. And so maybe he has some, like, animosity towards him. I don't know. But there's, like, that could have possibly sparked the beef. Who knows? I I just don't understand why they were keeping up a facade that they were together all these years. I don't they, know. They wanted to be like looked at as the the it couple I, still. Or maybe something. I think I mean I don't know. Um, well, hopefully Will Smith is okay. <laughs> <laughs> both of them. Hopefully they're both okay. Right, right. But mostly Will Smith. Let's be honest here. 
she's she's been long been moved on you know so drake released a new album your thoughts scared scared to say anything just kidding um i didn't get through all of it i got to like number 20 20 or 19 19 Cause, cause songs because there, there there's 23 songs in there bro that fool just shits out songs like it's nobody's business that's why his songs all sell the same and he hasn't had a fucking good song since like 2009 and i will die on that hill and you know what i was a little scared too to talk about this too because there's a lot of fucking incels a lot of fucking writers that want to come over here and be like drake 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 but you know what fuck that man i'm tired of this man and i said what i said and i've always said that <laughs> oh is that a song you kind of okay <clears throat> never always said and I've always said it's like just it's like attach like and I've always said that to things that you've never always said. Oh. I mean like yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um yeah, I didn't listen to it. I haven't listened to like his like last like three albums, I think. Cuz it just doesn't interest me anymore. Um mm-hmm. some people are mad because Apparently he like teased Nikki being on the album, but she wasn't. But then other people were saying because Nikki's album is coming out in November, so that he might be on her album. So maybe that's what he was teasing. But um, then he's just like taking shots at like people in his songs. I mean that's what he always does. It's getting old. It's like he's in his late thirties. It's an old bit. Like, can we stop beating the horse? It's dead, you know? Let it die. Thoughts? I'm not gonna lie, I like a few songs, but... Yeah. He has catchy the- songs. They're catchy, but they're not... It's like... It's not... Okay, I'm not here to debate the music, though. I'm not oh, here okay. to debate the music. I just don't like... I just don't like... I just don't... I don't know. He gives me the ick. Okay. He gives me the ick with his... With his little lyrics. With his little misogynistic lyrics. I don't like them. I don't like it. It's not cute. People are speculating that he's taking shots at Riri in one of his new songs. Oh, he definitely <clears> is. <throat> like, he might as well just have spelled her name out. At I mean, at that point, yeah. I have the lyrics right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's as clear as, uh, as it gets. In his lyrics, he writes, why they make it sound like I'm still hung up on you. And hold on. I, I have to stop it right there. If we're like pressing play, pressing pause and play, like I'm going to stop it right there. They're making it seem like you're so hung up on this person or whatever because you're still talking about it. Why are you talking about it? You know what I mean? Anyway, that could never be me. And then he put gal, like how Rihanna talks. I mean, he I guess he talks like that too, but like, Riri calls herself a bad girl, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like another hint, like, you know? Can't run me, better him than not me, better it's not me, I'm anti, I'm anti. It's just like... It's annoying. And here's here's the best part. He says the sex was average with you. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. A hint at her song, Sex With Me, So Amazing. Mm hmm Um... Yeah, I mean, this guy is just, I just, it's just giving bitter ex, hurt, yeah, that's a, scorned that's a, that's lover. A big L on, on his part right there. Like, Riri has two kids. She's happy. Leave her alone. Like, just leave her alone. Okay, Aubrey. Then he also shaded somebody else, Esperanza Spalding. Who won a Grammy Award over him for Best New Artist in 2011, which was 12 years ago. And this man is still having a grudge over this. Don't read ahead, sir. No, I was saying like, wow. Yeah. I was thinking 12 years ago. And he put four Grammys to my name, 100 nominations. Esperanza Spalding was getting all the praises. I'm trying to keep it humble. I'm trying to keep it gracious. Who give a fuck? Michelle Obama put you on her playlist. We th- then we never hear from you again like you was taken I mean like dang 
So, like, he's just hurt over, like, Rihanna, so he talks about it, and then he's hurt over that nomination. That he didn't get, yeah, yeah didn't the nomination. Get, yeah. Uh-huh. So he talks about that. On top of that, Come on. apparently he didn't give credit to someone for doing vocals on the song Calling For You, and she called him out on Twitter. She goes by Rai Rai on Twitter, and she was just, like, saying, like, really, Drake? Like... Like, I feel like I should be touched by this, but after, like, 15 years, you're still using my vocals without crediting me on the song, whatever. 15, oh, so it's an old song? Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Her vocals are old, but this is from his new album. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, so he Her used vo- that He one. used it on his new album. Um, it's just, like, I don't, it, you know? And then, uh, like, not that long ago, a couple weeks ago, he was... Um, doing a show and then I saw that I guess a fan was saying that his ex left him alone at a concert while in a crowd and then did you see the video? It was like oh, somebody recorded yeah, it. yeah, he gave him $50,000. Yeah. But it, like first of all I need to see the video because I don't know what exactly happened. But, like, the man is on stage and there's a person, like, in a crowd. So, I highly doubt that they had a conversation. You know what I mean? So, like, he doesn't know if what the guy did was warranted for the ex to leave him alone. Like, you don't know if he's the bad guy and you're over here giving him $50,000. Okay, whatever. That's fine. That's for all the dogs. Okay, but that's fine. Whatever. That's fine. But then he gets the crowd to shout, fuck that bitch. Oh, really? I didn't see that part. Like, that's too far. That's too far. You don't even know yeah, what the you, fuck you happened. Yeah, you don't know anything. That's too fucking far. That's funny. And then on top of that, you know what? I'm going to go in on Drake today because I am fucking, I've had it. This man. What else? I hate this man. And look, if you like his music, that's not a diss to you at all. You can like whatever the fuck you want to like. And that's fine. You know, whatever floats everyone's boat. Okay. But on top of that, I will never forgive this motherfucker for fucking going and speaking bad on Megan Thee Stallion's name. Okay, that shit was sick, bro. He when he fucking dissed her on his last album, he said this bitch lie about getting shots, but she's still a stallion. Like, I feel like crying. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, like it hurts me that that happened because like. like no one believed her and it turned out to be true you know what i mean Mm -hmm. sorry (laughs) (laughs) i just have a lot of feelings i just have a lot of feelings but like it just i guess it just hits home because that's the type of shit that women deal with on a daily basis you know like (sighs) so that just that sucks i don't like that (laughs) Like, this fucking Tory Lanez got put away in prison for this shit. Like, it happened, and no one believed her. And people, for no reason, just decided to drag her name through the mud. And they didn't even know what happened. And, like, that's what happens to women all the time. People don't believe women. People don't trust women. Like, there's so many expectations on women. And, like, it's just... It fucking sucks. And this is really a fucking Barbie movie moment right here because, like, fuck the patriarchy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, that shit, like, I don't know. I really, I didn't like that. And I felt for her because, like, oh, she got a lot of backlash and shit for that. And, And she was like, she even said herself, she was like, and when the motherfucking facts come out, remember all y'all ho, <laughs> all y'all ho ass favorite rappers that stood behind someone that shot a female. People attack me. Y'all go up for it. I defend myself now. I'm not doing, I'm doing too much every time it never ends. And this did not happen until I came out and said I got shot. Y'all don't fuck with me. Okay, cool. Fuck it. Bye. So in conclusion, fuck Drake. <laughs> fuck the patriarchy (sighs) and that's not also that's not well i didn't say this no i I, yeah i didn't say this but that's not like a dig at men like Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's the the type of men who 
who do this, you know, who contribute to these societal norms, like, you know, show up, be an ally, like, speak up against this shit, you know what I mean? Like, so no, it's, it's, I know I didn't say this, but I just want to preface because things can get misconstrued. I'm not saying like, mm-hmm. fuck men, I don't hate men, like yeah. whatever, you know, like feminism isn't about hating men. It's about equality. It's not about we what we want women to be better it's about we want to be equal we want to seat at the table we want to be seen we don't want to be overlooked you know like it's just it's the bare fucking minimum it's the bare minimum and so i just wanted that's that's it just wanted to be clear good night <laughs> <laughs> have a good night, have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, Doja Cat is a fucking loser. Oh my Did you God. fucking see Doja Cat, bro? What now? <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? What is going on? You don't know? No. She posted a selfie on Instagram um, with her wearing a shirt of a neo-Nazi on it named um. Sam Hyde. And people called her out on it. And like she, she knows, I know she knows who this man is. She's not just going to wear a fucking random ass shirt of someone. And then people called her out on it. She deleted the photo. She re-uploaded the photo, cropped it without his face, without his face in the picture. And then she um, re-uploaded it with the caption, like the rolly eyes emoji. And so it's like, you know what you're doing. Like, you know what you're doing. And the uh, fucking kicker. Why are you going to call me out on it? <laughs> oh, my God. No, I'll no. take out his face. Yeah, like, oh, my God, you dumb bitches are mad at me for this type of thing. But the fucking kicker, you know what it is? Her mom is an Ashkenazi Jew. Her mom's Jewish. Oh, I did not know that. And she's a Nazi on her shirt. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, so, um, over Doja. Done with her ass. She's just fucking weird. She's a weirdo. She's lame. She's a loser. L. L. Loja. Loja. Loja Lat. Loja Lat. <laughs> and I, I hate that I, I'm talking shit about her right after I just went on a whole spiel, but we have to keep each other accountable, okay? If she wasn't do it, like, if you're a horrible human being, you're a horrible human being, and, you know, you can't excuse that, whether you're a man or a woman or, you know, cis- if you don't identify as either, um... If you're shitty, you're shitty. It doesn't matter. You're going to get called out on it. But if you're not, then I love you. And, like, you know? But she's just fucking on a whole other level. And so she's done. Also, uh, we won't get into it, but there is a bed bug epidemic in France. And... <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't know about this? No. How do you not know about this? Dude, I don't know about anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. My hat. Yeah, so what what's up with that? Like, how is... So, a bed bug infestation is sweeping the streets of Paris right now. Um, they're just, like, hopping all over the place, or what? Basically, really? they're everywhere. They're in buses, trains, inside movie theaters, and hotels. And as millions of people are visiting right now, because Paris Fashion Week is wrapping up right now, um, people are scared that the bed bugs could potentially travel oh, home with the visitors. So... They think that the UK is next. Um, I don't fucking know. But I guess between 2017 and 2022, more than one in 10 households reported a bed bug infestation. Um, Mm. But the reason why this is happening and why, like, they're not dying is because basically over the years they have increased they've adapted into like a super bed bug and they are like immune to like the pesticides wow i was gonna ask like is there like like how yeah yeah so um so now they gotta invent a new pesticide to kill that one yep and then it'll just evolve and then they've mutated into super bugs and have Have evolved to I don't know. They've evolved to create defenses and adaptations against certain chemicals typically used to destroy them. 
aka they're built different <laughs> <laughs> but they they're in mattresses bed frames line in and waiting for humans to sleep then they crawl up and suck your blood um it's crazy there there was um videos of people leaving like the streets of paris mattresses and furniture on the streets Dang. because people are getting rid of their their stuff but um the good news is that experts say that an outbreak in the u.s is unlikely so we're safe for now for now <laughs> but until then we have everything else to deal with mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah wow covered a lot right now i know we did and that's our show <laughs> <laughs> that's our show filled with twists and turns and ups and downs highs and lows um we'll be back next week with another fun costume and um until then we'll see you soon bye bye <laughs>